it's been a really long time since I brought this thing on the channel. This is my GSG STG44. It's a 22 replica of the German Sturmgewehr 44 or the STG44. Now we're out. I was out at the range recently and I forgot how fun this rifle is and all the little quirks that came with the thousands of rounds I put through this thing. I do mean thousands of rounds. Every time I took this thing to the range, I brought usually a minimum of a couple value packs, which would be about 1100 rounds usually. So every time this thing went out, I shot thousands through it. There was one point I got so dirty that uh, the bolt wouldn't move freely back and forth. I had to go in there with a rag and clean out the carbon just so that the bolt would uh, operate again. That's how filthy I got this thing. And it had a couple quirks happen with it over the years. One of them is the magazine. Now, it had this little pull down lever right here. Well, as you can see, it broke off and now it not only does it hold the bolt back because that's what it would do when it was empty this little peg would stick up and stop the bolt but now you can't pull down on the uh, follower and load rounds in so it's a little bit more tedious to load this thing but not impossible another weird thing is uh, when I was out at the range at 20 yards it was shooting so low uh, this thing was shooting very, very low. I had to max out the uh, elevation just for it to go a little bit high, just a little bit high. I think if I went down just a little bit, it would have been perfect, but wow, that's kind of goofy. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't even get a chance to try it out at 100 yards, and if you guys would like a video where I do take this thing to 100 yards and see how accurate it could be, let me know down in the comments. Let's see here. What, oh yeah, so there's a pin right here that holds, I believe, the uh, firing pin in place. Not taking the bolt apart. Um, it started to come out <laughs> under recoil. I actually um, had this weird jam where the bolt was locked back and it wasn't moving. I actually had to take it apart and take the bolt out to realize that that little pin had come out and started scraping against the side and it was kind of stuck in there. Well, um, I got a new pin, put it in, and it's not given me any issues since. But another little quirk that came with it. But this is, oh, this rifle is so cool. I've had this thing so long. I, oh man, I, I think I was 19 when I bought it, and I've shot so many rounds through it since that point. <laughs> Might have a dud. Sounds like you have a yeah, you have a dud. A dud on federal twenty twos. No, never. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually a pretty reliable rifle. 
Uh, the weight of it makes it so there's no recoil. You can literally just spray like this and the rifle's not gonna hardly move. I mean, 22s usually don't move a lot, but this thing, it doesn't move at all. If you can overcome the weight of it, then you'll be fine. Because it is a pretty heavy gun. It's replicating the original STG-44 with cast metal. So it is pretty heavy. But if you can overcome the weight, that thing will just stay where you want it. Another interesting thing about this rifle is the only piece of stamped steel on it is this handguard right up here. And you can tell it looks brand new, but you look at the rest of the receiver, it's aged differently. It's kind of interesting how the casting has aged differently than the foreguard, it's just, or the heat shield, I should say. It's kind of interesting. Honestly, and if you haven't seen my full review, there'll be a link down in the, the description below, but honestly, the only thing I wish they did differently was I wish it was made out of stamp steel. That's just that's just how I am. If you're going to replicate a World War II gun, replicate it right. Don't make it out of cast materials, but then the price would have gone up. And it's easier for a company to replicate a design of a rifle by making a casting. It's probably significantly cheaper to make and cheaper for us to buy. I've noticed these things have gone down in price. They're... Oh man, they're under 400 bucks some places. So if you'd like a little 22 that is not as boring as like a 1022, I would recommend this. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this random video. I just figured I've never had this thing in front of a white screen. Why not? And to talk about some of the little quirks and how it's aged over the years. But my review stands uh, true. I love this rifle. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming up. My back. Oh. oh. Healthy, right? Whew. All right.